use headphones for best experience. to try to help the people in Ukraine right now and I uh, started to think what can I do and then I realized I can I can draw a map of Ukraine and see if it will generate some money from YouTube and, uh, because of the YouTube ads and then I can take that amount and um, I found this page or actually I saw artists uh, artists in Sweden um, referring to this page and saying that they are creating art and giving the, the profit to Ukraine using this site so it's Sverige, I don't know if you can see it, Sverige for UNHCR dot SE. Um, UNHCR. So it's uh, help for Ukraine and here I can give uh, which amount I would like. So my plan is to do this weekly for a while after I've uh, uploaded this video for, I don't know, um, in March and April. Let's see how, how the video performs. So for a couple of weeks, maybe four weeks, eight weeks, uh, every week I will look on the amount YouTube uh, analytics and uh, give it to that site that I showed you. Okay, so let's start with the drawing. Um, I start with some light sketching of the borders, terrestrial borders. and also the coast here to the south, the coast of the Black Sea and uh, Azov Sea. so I can have everything will fit into this this uh, piece of paper and this frame
This is the tricky part when you try to get the shape right in the beginning. Maps of countries, islands, regions are so irregular shapes. You need to do a lot of trial and error in the beginning. At least I need to do that. So you in the end will recognize the familiar shape of a country. Sometimes you can change focus, so instead of thinking about the land, I can change focus and try to draw the sea instead, the Black Sea. And it gives you another perspective, you see the shapes a bit differently. Use a white marker for for the terrestrial border. Well, let's start with with the coastal border here. The Black Sea. Son province. The Azov Sea. There's a small piece of land connecting the Kherson, Kherson um, province to Krim here, uh, peninsula. Here's 
this stretch of water is called um, Sivash. It's a system of shallow lagoons. This um, blue marker can also draw some important rivers in Ukraine. So we have the very dominant river here in the very center of the country, Dnipro. system of uh, reservoirs, lakes and uh, the river. This uh, reservoir in the north, north of Kyiv, is uh, the Kyivsk reservoir. And we have Kyiv here, and the next reservoir. Big reservoir, the uh, Kremenchuk reservoir. And this is the, uh, let's see, uh, Kakovsk. Uh, Reservoir. Kakovsky is a, is a town here somewhere. So, like this. So that's uh, Dnipro. And uh, in the west, we have. Uh, Nister starting here south of uh, Odessa and it goes into Moldova then here to the north it makes the border between Moldova and uh, Ukraine for a while and then goes into into Ukraine entirely making the border between some uh, provinces here to the west and ending up don't know I always draw the the rivers in the wrong direction. They're not ending up here, they're starting here in the mountains. These are the Carpathian Mountains, the highest mountains in, in this um, the biggest mountains in Ukraine, stretching from Poland, Slovakia, Romania here, and crossing the southwestern Ukraine. But uh, I will draw the entire Dniester, also the part here that's in that's in uh, Moldova. And uh, then we have the Tuna, Danube. And part of Danube, before it uh, takes this turn to the south also makes the border between Ukraine and Romania. I'll just 
just draw the rest on the Azov Sea coast. And the Black Sea coast. It's Nipro actually goes more like this. That was another river. Let's go on with the terrestrial border. Start here in the west in the Carpathian Mountains. When you have this grid, like the rivers and the the uh, coast, then it's easier to to follow follow the landscape and do uh, more precise terrestrial border, I think. But it will be a challenge, I must admit. Mm, I'll start here. The very west. Slovakia, small piece of uh, shared uh, border there, and also Hungary, also a small piece, small portion. But let's focus on Ukraine's borders now. Here's the place where it follows Sneister River for a while. Then it goes like this. And crossing the Sneister River, and we have this southern part of Odessa province historical province called Budjak, I have read or seen on a, on a map, but I don't know so much about that. And here it follows Danube River. draw the provinces of Ukraine 
it's divided into provinces or oblast and um, to make it look a bit different from, from the, the national border I will do it in dotted lines but with the same using the same color white so here we need space for one, two, three, four provinces. I think I maybe made this part of the border a bit short. It should have been a bit wider, I think, but it's okay. But I need to keep that in mind when I'm drawing the the Borders like this. Yeah, I think I will start uh, every border. I will start uh, here. It's a bit tricky with the with the long terrestrial border to keep track on where you are. So I will I will mark out all the places where the provincial borders meet the national terrestrial border, if you see what I mean. Here, the provincial border follows Nister for a little while. Also here. And also here. So where the provincial borders meet the sea. so I can try to hide this part of the board. So I will talk about or I will mention the names of the 
all the provinces later. First, I just need to focus on drawing them as correct shape as possible. So you you can see now that I was right when I s when I told you that this part maybe was a bit too short because now the provinces are like slanted like this like. Um, this shape should be more more uh, straight up like this, but now it's a bit it's a bit slanted. Same with this province. But I hope you can recognize them still. guideline the, the Dnipro river very good to have something to start all the lines from that you know is fixed already Dnipro and Zaporizhia, Zaporizhia. The border follows the Dnipro for a while here, but not here. Dun 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 dun. anymore that I would make this. I think all the lines are connected. Almost all the lines are connected. Yeah, I think I think we have it now, all the provinces. Of the 
these provinces and the capital city of the entire Ukraine. And um, yeah, I think I can zoom in a bit as well. And this province is Volin. And the capital city in Volin is Lutsk. Lutsk is located here, the southeast of the province. And next we have Rivne. Rivne. Province and even uh, the capital city. Named the same as the province. Or I guess the province is named after the city. Uh, in most cases the provinces are have the, have the same name as their capital cities. So here we have Jitomir. Jitomir in Jitomir uh, province and uh, now I see I forgot Kiev is both a province bigger province and also the city itself is like its own political Entity, so here we have Kiev city. But then I wonder if it's uh, another capital for Kiev or Blast. Got to check that. Administrative center in Kyiv Oblast is also Kyiv. And then we have Chernihiv here to the north. Chernihiv city and Chernihiv region, or sorry, province. And here we have Sumi city, the capital of Sumi province. Here we have the uh, second largest, second biggest city in Ukraine. 1.5 million people in Kharkiv. And the province is called Kharkiv as well. Here in the very east we have Luhansk. City and Luhansk province. And uh, next to Luhansk, we have Donetsk. Donetsk city, fifth biggest city in Ukraine. The 900,000 population. And this is Donetsk province. Here in the very center of the Dnieper lowland here we have the province Dnipro, and the city Dnipro, by the river, Dnipro, so everything is called Dnipro here, it's very important 
river through Ukraine. Dnipro is the fourth biggest city in Ukraine. It has almost one million people living there. And then we have uh, Zaporizhia, also along Dnipro river. Zaporizhia is the uh, sixth the biggest city in Ukraine. 720,000 is the population. And uh, the province is called also Zaporizhia. We have a province called Kherson, where Dnipro ends up in the Black Sea. There are not so many big cities in this area. It's in the, oops, sorry, it's in the uh, Black Sea lowland. This uh, region is called, or Perichir. Nomorskaya Nizmenost. But there is a smaller city or town called Kherson by the Dnipro River here, at the very end of the river. And it's the capital of Kherson province. And uh, then we have Mikulaev. Mikulaev. Here. By a river, actually. That is quite long. I should have maybe included here on the map, actually. It's quite long. I guess important river in Ukraine. Here it also makes the border between these two provinces and uh, goes like this. Comes from the mountains here, the highlands in the west. Mm. Let's see. I have to check the name of this river because I can't read on the map I'm looking at, the reference map I'm looking at, it's so tiny, the typography. Okay, it's Pivtanipu River. somewhere in this province in the highlands here called the, uh, the Vizina Podolska or the Podolian uplands next to the Carpathian mountains it's a highland region here so there we have the source of the Pivdenipo river by this river before it ends up in the very, the very last part of the Dnipro River and the Black Sea eventually, we have Mikolaiv city. Mikolaiv city in Mikolaiv province. And um, then by the Black Sea, just north of the 
Mr. Rivers Estuary, we have Odessa, third biggest city in Ukraine, with uh, one million people as population. And Odessa province. It's like two parts, one northern part here and one southern part. The very narrow, narrow uh, piece of land here. It's at Nister River estuary. Okay, uh, let's move on to Vinitsia. Vinitsia is located by this river. And Venezia is also the province name. And then we have Kmelnitsky here. In the Podiska Visochina. Of the Podolian uplands. Uh, and the province itself is also called Melnitsky. And this province is named after Ternopil, this city here. And to the very west we have Lviv city and province. So in the very west, southwest, we have a city almost at the border to Slovakia here, to the very, very west of the country. Also close to the Dniester River, in the Carpathians. Uzorod, it's called. But the province actually is uh, not named after this city. It's called Zakarpatia. Oh, yeah. Zakarpatia. And here we have the city Ivano Frankivsk. Something like that. And the province is also called Ivano Frankivsk. This province is called uh, Cherniv, Cherniv, sorry, Chernivtsi. Here's the city located in the center of the province with the same name. Still have some cities in the very center of the country also in the very south of the country. Here we have Cherkasy. City is located by the um, Kremenchuk Kremenchutska Reservoir here city of Cherkasy in Cherkasy province, Poltava, capital of Poltava province, and uh, Kirovorad, in the center of the Kirovorad province, here in the Dnieper Lola. This peninsula here we have capital Simferopol. And 
also forgot the terrestrial border to to Sevastopol. It's a city which is its own province. Sevastopol and uh, Simferopol here. Okay, I think I haven't forgotten any of the capital cities now. Let's zoom out again. So the biggest cities are located here, in this area I think. Um, the area around the Dnieper River, because it's a fertile land here, the, the Dnieper lowlands. Uh, so we have Dnipro before the biggest city, we have uh, uh, Mykolaiv, ninth biggest city, we have um, Zaporizhia, sixth biggest city here, Donetsk, fifth biggest. And we have the Lviv city in the very west. It's quite big for being in this area. It's the seventh biggest city with the 720,000 people living there. And also Kharkiv is a big city far to the east. And of course Kiev is the big biggest with more than 2 million people. 6 million, I think. So, as I said, this is the Carpathian Mountains. And this is the Podolian Uplands, following after the mountains, before we come to the Dnieper low Lowland. And to the south, we have these Black Sea Lowlands. Basically, the Kherson province. And I would like to show you a small place, very small place in the Kherson region, the Kherson province. It's a little village by the, by the river Dnipro or at the shore of the this reservoir the Kakowska Kakowska reservoir the northern shore of, of uh, this lake we have a place called Gamalsvenskby and it means old Swedish village and I've always been very fascinated by this place. I've seen documentaries about it in Sweden, it's a bit, sometimes you hear about it, it's like, a, it's like a special place for us in Sweden because they actually, there are people there talking Swedish as their native language. So in the history, in the um, 18th century, people moved there from today's Estonia the island uh, Hioma in Estonia, or the Swedish name for that island is Dag -a. That island in the Baltic Sea, uh, just uh, outside the, the Estonian coast, was Swedish between 1561 and 1710. So they had a Swedish-speaking population there. And at the end of the 18th century, in uh, 1780, 1,200 people were deported from this island, Dage, in Estonia. And 
they moved here. So I guess they traveled along the Dnipro River, just like the Vikings did uh, some hundred days, some hundred years earlier. And they settled here, in this fertile land, by the river. And they continue to maintain the, the Swedish cultural heritage and language for hundreds of years. At least for yeah, 200 years. So I have seen documentaries where the old people speak an old uh, type of Swedish here in Gamal Svenskby. It's very fascinating. And yeah, the, the, I think there's a sign there also in Swedish saying the name of the village, Gamal Svenskby. Also, I can show you one big city here that is not to capital city, but it's actually the eighth biggest city in Ukraine, in the Dnipro province, in the western part. It's called Krivi Ri. this map with some uh, I don't know maybe with the province names would be nice I haven't actually counted how many how many provinces there are so let's do it as well and um, I'm not sure I, I'm looking at the reference map and I will spell it the way they are written there. I guess there are different ways of writing the Ukrainian language when you're using Latin letters, but I'm not so very, I don't have so much knowledge of that. What happened to this marker? Here we have Volin. And uh, next to Volin we have Rivne. Here we have Jitomir. Zapo 
ktorých žia. Since it's spelled with two Z H or with just one Z H um I do like this because I don't have so much space left here. Horizon. Odessa I'll try to fix this as well Make it look a bit more neat Czerni, czernivci. I have to write it here outside the border. Czernivci. Czernivci. And Lviv. Last one, Sakarpatia. Sakarpatia. And uh, the reason this is named Sakarpatia, I'm not sure, but it's also the name for a historical region that maybe was part of the neighboring countries as well and the same with uh, this this is a historical region called Galicia also in Poland this part of Ukraine uh, Volhynia it's also historical it's 
historical region Policia here around Jitomir west of Kiev and along Dnipro it's also the Dnipro historical region here to the north we have the Siberia historical region to the northeast we have the Sloboda historical region Donetsk and uh, Luhansk is part of the Donbass historical region Zaporizhia is also historical region here along the southern part of Dnipro Bessarabia in Moldova and, and Ukraine Pujak, sorry, Pujak here. Taurica, historical name for this region here, Krim. So I haven't read anything about these regions, I, just, I have been looking at a map where the historical regions are named, like the Podolia as well. As I mentioned before, Podolian uplands. So, this is my map of Ukraine. Hope you found this video relaxing, informative. Thank you so much for watching. And by watching you will also help. If you're watching it uh, when it's quite uh, recently uploaded, at least now in March, April 2022. Because I will donate the money from I get some um, some uh, revenues, profit for this video. I sh I'm sure I'm, I will get something. Uh, I will donate it to help the people in Ukraine right now. Okay, be well, take care. See you soon. Stay safe.